Welcome back and thank you very much for clicking the link. My name is Yaku, this is my workshop and today I'll be showing you how to make a complete line bracelet. I've made a video on this subject in the past and because of the comments and the questions I had on that video, I decided to do a full video of a full manufacturing. I did this previous video in silver, this particular video is going to be in platinum with over 10 carats worth of diamonds in this one. I'll be dealing with everything from the making of the links right through to the setting of the stones and the polishing. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, if you're just curious or if you're planning to make one, I'm going to try and break it down in as much detail as possible, then watch right till the end. Like I've mentioned before, the video that I've done on how to make a line bracelet is a very detailed instructional video on how to get to the final stage of making the links. And I'm going to link that into the descriptions below. You're more than welcome to click on that. I would highly recommend you do if you are planning to make something like this. You'll notice I'm not cutting through the actual collets, I'm cutting only the sides open. I only need the sides to be exposed, but what's important here is that you get the symmetry correct. Try your utmost to stick to the exact same size. Three millimeters there are with a one millimeter gap. I'm using a BB phrase or a parallel phrase, I think they call it here in the UK, to ensure that those gaps are all the same size. Symmetry means a lot. Every one of the links need to be as close as you possibly can get them. They're all handmade, they're all individual, they're not cast and repeated. When it comes down to the soldering, try and use the hardest solder you can, that you can use and then work your way backwards as usual. But more especially for these because you've got a lot of soldering happening after this point and you've got a lot of opportunity for that solder to merge those links together. Then it's literally just a matter of repeating yourself. This could be a bit tedious, but it does pay off. This is what I wanted to show you. So this is basically an, a good example of a single link. You've got the grooves at the bottom. If you've watched a previous video, you'll see why those ones are there. This is for the wire to fold in. And then I'm just making a little pilot hole. You can sort of see where that is. I'll be doing, uh, I'll be putting a BB phrase in here and then drawing it to the top so to leave me a lot of meat because that little part between the groove and the hole is what's going to be wearing away over the years and I want to give it as much life as possible. 6 by 0 0.75 it is. You could probably make it whatever you want to but this is a nice standard for me. I think the concept is simple. I'll show you two examples here of how I'm linking them together. Try and get them tight, you don't want loose, loose wires. You literally bend the wire, get them through, and then push the wire back. You get this as tight as possible. The, the, I, I had some comments where people were asking me about, isn't this going to be too stiff? But it is stiff in the beginning, but you're continuously working with this in your hands, and as you're working with it, it sort of finds its way, and it becomes looser. You don't want to start with a loose bracelet, and then have a super loose bracelet with massive gaps afterwards so try and get everything as tight as you possibly can and don't worry if it's a bit stiff because you're going to have a lot of relaxation as you're working through there's a second link so any kind of pusher really once it's gone through i'm pushing them i'm, I'm literally only linking them together now there's no soldering going on that's what you're looking for you've got that little part pushing past that little groove that you've made. Now what we're going to try and do now is get that wire that I folded around flat into that groove so that we've got maximum amount of wire.
flattened burr, something that gives it a bit of resistance. And I'm just going to lightly tap it. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm really just taking the wire and I'm flattening it in the groove that I've already made. So there's no gaps there. I'll still be working it off, but very little of it will be worked off. We're not going to work the wire away. Now it's really starting to shape. And we can start soldering. Try and stick to those high solders as much as you possibly can. I know this is going to be the tricky part because if it if it runs here, you fuse them together. So you've got to be really cautious. Don't just go wild with a big flame. Be very specific. Draw the solder to where it needs to be. And when you see it running, pull away. Once it's all been soldered, now you can work it off with a piece of sandpaper or something, flatten it nicely. It's starting to really, really come together now. You can see the symmetry, you can see that flat bottom, everything is nice. Ah, the clasp, the fun part. I've discussed this clasp in detail with the customer lengthwise, how many diamonds are going to be mounted on top of it. And then from there onwards, I put a little bit of my own spin on it. I wanted the clasp to fall away. So I wanted a little chenille at the back of it. So I started off by adding a little wire in a groove at the back part of it. So the next step is to get a uh, wire. This, this is a wire that will connect with the actual bracelet onto a little tube. Well, it's not a tube yet. It's just really a piece of wire that I'll be drilling into a tube. Get some holes into that chenille that I made earlier. So I've removed that center piece, as you can see, and just cleaned that up. And then what we want to do is get that wire in there, drill the hole through the wire, and you will have a little wire going through that. So you've got a movable clasp, a clasp that falls away. And obviously on the other side of the chain, I've got to add the little chenille as well, because it's all movable. I wanted to go through a bit more trouble with the actual clasp, because that's the part that gets used most. And you typically find a lot of wear and tear around that. So to put the chenille there just gives it a little bit of extra life. We were going for something that is going to be better than a shop bought bracelet here. So I, I, I didn't want to cut any corners with it. I wanted it to be a custom piece. So you've got the wire going through. Starting to mock it up now. This is where it starts really getting exciting. Like after all this work, this is where your heart start beating a little, starts to beat a little faster. You're nervous and excited at the same time. <laughs> I'm sure if you're a goldsmith, you know what I'm talking about. If you're just sort of like a normal person watching these videos, you probably think I'm crazy. But yeah, these small things matter to us. And that little plate is just to neutralize the entire bottom so it's smooth and flat. I'm really sorry about the uh, the camera angles on this. I, I wish I could get more detail 
I'm starting to use a new camera now, which would make a bit of a difference once I've got it figured out. But this is the best I can show you. I hope you uh, can see what's going on. But basically, just drilling holes through the chenilles here. On drilling holes, just take it easy. Do a pre pilot with something smaller and then go really slow. So that U shaped wire over there is for the side uh, flaps, the little clamps that will close the actual clasp. It's basically second security of it. If you've got a little bit of a problem with injury or blood, please look away now. Slight stabbing right there. Don't worry, I'm okay. I've survived it. This is something that happens regularly. So my tip, my tip from my side, and I don't know if this is medically sound, I'm not endorsing it just in case I get sued, but I use a bit of super glue. I have done for 25 plus years and I'm still around, so it just stops the bleeding and carry on. I'm cutting little pieces of wire to make the chenille for the little flaps that are going to go on the side of the clasp. Like I say, this is where the fun starts. It's little engineering really, it's good fun. And I use a little bit of oil just to motivate that wire to go through. So try and keep those holes as tight as possible. Notice at the end of that wire there's a little bead. As you're pulling the wire through the actual chenille, you want it to stop in a little bit of a recess so that it doesn't move up or down. And those little beads, obviously, once it gets to that point, stops. And then once you cut it off on the other side, you can flatten it and it will flatten into the recess which holds the wires in, and that's the fall away. Right, good fun, look at that. At this point I'm dancing around. Yeah, so we might as well make the safety chain as well. Yes, so in uh, on Instagram reached out to me and explained to me that in Iran and Shiraz, this link has been used for over 500 years, so I imagine it's pretty strong. It was just good fun making it anyway. You guys can reach out to me on Instagram as well. There's a lot of communication going down there under Yaku the Jeweler. J-A-C-O. Jeweler is spelled the UK way. So since these little links were just in a perfectly round shape a little while ago, and now they all linked up in a chain, I thought I'd motivate that movement and that seating a little bit by putting a bit of oil on top of a mandrel and repeatedly giving it movement so that we've got a nice flow and over time this will relax and even become softer Now I've been asked by so many people to talk about setting and set work So I thought I'd dedicate a little part of this video to that This is really just a little bit of shellac on a piece of wood and this just to give me a little bit of a grip on it Right, so because I made these settings exactly four millimeters wide, uh, because of the four millimeter diamonds, I'm able to use this four millimeter lens phrase to just seat the settings. Uh, the wires are just slightly in, so there's very minimal cutting that needs to happen. Uh, this is the fun part of it. If, if you've done all the preparation, this, the setting is really easy. So I'm literally just going to come at an angle and seat it. So if the lens phrase is absolutely flat on the actual setting, you've cut just a fraction of the wire away because the wire is slightly recessed. And if everything is four millimeters and the stones are all calibrated, they will literally just pop in there. And the beauty of that is that you can uh, just fold the wires over. So 
So I hope you can see what I'm doing there. I'm coming in at an angle. And the same with the stones. You just pop them in at an angle, slide them in, click it in. And then with, with anything flat, I'm, just, I'm using a pair of tweezers here. I'm basically just hugging the stone by moving the wire over the actual stone in opposing positions. So you can see I've cut the wires at a slight excess there. When you're buying these chains, typically they don't have this excess, which makes it nicer if you've got the wire excess to fold over. But again there, opposite sides, this one, then that one. And as you're going along with this, you just keep checking the stones are lying nice and flush. And again, as with everything with the line bracelet or tennis bracelet to some of you, it's a matter of repetition. With a sharp cutter, make sure with your mind on symmetry to cut all the excess wires off. And then with a cup phrase and a beading tool, you secure the diamonds. Now most of the polish work on something like this gets done on the bench, but once you're done with that, you want to give it a final polish on the machine. I'm using platinum polish and the bristle brushes on the machine in this case as well. If you guys have worked with platinum before, you'll know that it takes a lot longer to polish. You've got to make sure that you run over these areas with a sufficient amount of polish to get the, uh, to get the metal to shine to its potential. I'm using a black bristle brush and then I'm moving over to the white bristle brush for the final polish. Very satisfying this, but with everything else that you've done on the job, don't, don't rush through it. Make sure that you spend quality time on the polishing. It's not a quick job, this. You know, I'm sitting here listening to myself while I'm busy editing the video, and I'm thinking to myself, this sounds very much like I'm reading out some sort of a recipe. So if there's any suggestions from your side, if you wanted to have rather text, or if you can't understand my South African accent, you're more than welcome to leave it in the comments, and I will take it to heart. Now the very last thing for me to do is just to put that safety chain together. I've put two O-rings on the sides and I kept them really chunky so I don't have to solder them. And it's just a matter of putting it on and bending it back into position. And that's it. You can see the assay mark at the bottom of the clasp. This is the fall away clasp that I made. It's really just for simplicity to get to reach the, the trigger clasp. Thank you very much for watching the video to the end. I really appreciate your support. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to put them in the comments and I will promise you I'll get to them as soon as time allows. There's not much more for me to say other than I really enjoyed this project. The customer was involved from the beginning to the end. 
I was really impressed by the way it came out. Uh, and I, can, I really can't wait to make the next one. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you soon.